we are but it, it's like, uh, he's aggravated with me too yeah. I'm going to call to order the Finance Committee meeting for February the 3rd, 2020. Before we get into our agenda items, we have two items of recognition that will be presented at this time by our mayor. Yes, if the council will join me down front. We have two retirements to announce tonight, and we will ask uh, Ty Pickering to join us up here, as well as Todd Whitman and Chief Johnny T, if we can. These are bittersweet things we do. It's hard to keep hold of a good man nowadays. Have you noticed that? <laughs> um, first, we'll talk about Ty Pickering. He was hired January 22, 1998 as a patrol officer in the police department. Through his tenure with the city, Ty worked in the patrol division and administrative division. Ty held the positions of officer, command sergeant, major, which is now considered sergeant, and is leaving us as a lieutenant, to which he was prom promoted on January 30, 2017. Lieutenant Pickering is retiring after 22 years of service. Which is... With it, and I think the chief might like to talk about you for a minute. Well, I had a chance to talk about these guys the other day at their, uh, their retirement party we had Friday. Uh, the one thing I got to thinking about, you know, we've been talking about in, in staff and, and things about how shorthanded we are on the streets. Uh, and then after, after Friday, I got to thinking Sunday when I sat in my office, you know, that's over 50, 50 years of supervisory uh, experience that we're losing between these two guys. And uh, that's, that's tough to do as well. So. Uh, the one good thing about it, though, is that Ty's agreed to help us. He's going to help us with some computer stuff. He's also going to be involved with our athletic program as well, uh, which I'm going to give an update a little bit ago. That's if we can get him through the front door. I think Chris was quick to lock him out, but we're going to try to fix that. So uh, I appreciate, Ty, all you do and all you're continuing to do, uh, helping us with Hilldale, uh, with the police department, and that uh, intertw intertwining that with regards to what he's going to do now that he's leaving the PD. So thank you. Thank you. Todd Whitman began his service to the Muskogee Police Department on July 31st, 1987, and is retiring after 32 years of service. Captain Whitman recently served in internal affairs and also held various ranking positions in the patrol uh, division through his tenure with the city. And Todd's kind of a definitely a bittersweet one with with Todd's retirement that leaves me the old guy within the police department because we were hired together in that summer of 1987 so uh, while I hate to see uh, Todd leave uh, I am excited for him and his family to have an opportunity to do some traveling and just enjoy retirement so congratulations we'll miss you and I'm Do you have all the pictures you want? Okay, wait, wait. Before you go, you have to shake everyone's hand, starting with me. Thank you. 
Employee of the Month uh, award to. Okay, pay attention. <laughs> um, the Employee of the Month this month is Marvin Fennell. One of our more tenured employees. Marvin, you want to come up here while we talk about you? <laughs> Marvin has worked for the city since August 28, 1989. This is Marvin's second time to be recognized as Employee of the Month, previously being given this award in October of 2015. This year, Marvin was nominated for demonstrating proficiency of assigned duties, showing dependability, having a positive work attitude, and going above and beyond his normal job expectations. It's too bad you're not running for office. <laughs> uh, in his free time, Marvin likes to watch movies and go out to eat. He likes to watch all types of movies, as long as it's a good one. And he enjoys all types of outdoor activities. Marvin's favorite movies are Avatar and Man of Steel. And he particularly enjoys movies based on comic books. Marvin said, with all of the great employees we have in the city, this is such an honor to be nominated. Would you like to say a word or two? <laughs> well, okay, I'll just tell you he's a good fella then. And, and we appreciate his smiling face. That's right. She has to say that because I see her every day. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Well, Returning to the Finance Committee agenda, <coughs> item number one, please. Consider approval of Finance Committee minutes of January 6, 2020. After reviewing of the minutes, are there any corrections or additions to our minutes? Move for approval. Second. Okay. Have a motion and a second to approve our minutes. Discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Item number one passes. Item number two, please. Consider approval of claims for all city departments December 27, 2019 through January 23, 2020. Do we have a report from the Purchasing Committee? Purchasing Committee did meet this afternoon, and we had a few questions, and staff, as always, was very uh, helpful in answering those questions, and I do recommend approval. Second. Have a motion and a second to approve our claims. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Item number two passes. Item number three, please. Consider approval of an agreement between Olson Incorporated and the City of Muskogee for professional engineering services that include the design, bidding, construction, and grant services for an omnidirectional approach lighting system for the runway 13 approach at Muskogee Davis Regional Airport or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, this is an agreement between the City of Muskogee and Olson Engineering. It is for professional engineering services for the design, engineering, construction, and grant services of the directional approach lighting system on our primary runway at the Muskogee Davis Airport. It's runway 13. Estimated cost is $138,100. Uh, this will be paid for 90% with uh, uh, grant funds from the FAA. Uh, this system will improve the visibility for the pilots, especially when there's low light conditions or inclement weather. And it's a great opportunity to improve our airport's safety and accessibility. The airport board met last week and recommended approval. We'd be glad to answer any questions. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any discussion? Roll call, please. 
Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. <coughs> yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Item number three passes. Item number four, please. Consider approval of change order number <coughs> one to construction contract with McGuire Brothers for the 30 inch water line improvements project, updating the Davis Bacon wage rate determination or take other necessary action. Mr. Riley. Yes, Mr. Chairman and committee. This is um, our 30 inch water line. It's about a three mile water line. Um, actually, the uh, notice to proceed date was today. Um, they're not quite on site yet, but the materials are ordered and we'll start seeing work on this very soon uh, within within the next week or so. Um, if you see the map over there, we're, we're going to start on the uh, Highway 69 end, the west end, and work to the east. The first phase goes from uh, goes from 69 west of 69 under spores under 69 and goes to 11th street about halfway and they have to complete that completely it's going down the trail and then uh, once that's complete they move from 11th all the way up under shawnee uh, near main street where they're we're doing the sewer work right now and and that'll complete the whole project it's a 300 day project um, and uh, this change order is is mainly clerical just the uh, owrb uh, is, is requesting we put the correct Davis Bacon wage rate determination in as it was updated recently. So this 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 doesn't change the price of the contract. It's just how much they pay their employees on on the federal requirements. And uh, we recommend approval. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. May be recognized. Yes, sir. Yeah, Mr. Riley. Will this is uh, project have an inspector? Yes. Yes, it's part of our OWRB work, which which uh, Great Plains is inspecting. Yeah. Okay, Let's double check. <coughs> Turn the floor back over, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Item number four passes. Item number five, please. Discuss and take action to authorize submission of letters of intent to the City of Muskogee Foundation <coughs> for fiscal year 2021 grant cycle for city projects as follows. $240,000 Muskogee Police Department car radio replacement, $151,000 Community Intervention Center, $100,000 Juvenile and Adult Community Service Program, $105,000 Grandview Park, $50,000 Mobile Stage, $115,000 hat box baseball improvements, $130,000 teen center, $100,000 demolition cleanup program. Mr. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the committee, uh, the City of Muskogee Foundation grant cycle is fast coming upon us and our uh, deadline for grant submissions or letter of intent submissions is a couple of weeks out. So we wanted to get these before you in committee uh, for your review and discussion. Uh, I'll go through them uh, briefly and then we can address questions as needed. Um, the first one on the list is uh, Muskogee Police Department car radio replacement. <coughs> um, this is proposed to be a six year grant at $40,000 a year. The radios can be replaced over time. We would match that with our city funds uh, and it would replace all the radios um, as needed. Uh, the next one is the Community uh, Intervention Center uh, and the Juvenile Adult uh, Community Service. Those are both great programs run by Mr. Tucker's uh, department. They do great work in the community and I highly recommend those. Um, those are things that we've done in the past and you're probably familiar with them, but we can address questions if you have any. Um, next is uh, Grandview Park. You guys saw the plans at our last meeting um, and we, t we said we would apply the foundation to assist with the match that's needed for those grants. Um, this is that application. Um, also uh, requesting funding for a mobile stage uh, with all, all the different venues, including the Depot Green that's going to come online. There's been an increased demand for, uh, for a stage. We currently don't have one that we can move around. And this would be a, a good addition to the community. Um, Hatbox baseball improvements. Uh, we do need, uh, see a need to upgrade uh, some of those facilities out there that's part of the CIP and we would uh, ask that the foundation help us and match that CIP money here. Um, our teen center grant, our teen center uh, operates for, uh, in a large part based off of this grant and it's a very important program. We do recommend applying for it as we move forward and um, uh, lastly on our list is the demolition and cleanup program. We talked uh, some in the past 
You know, we have done this program through a community development block grant. Um, we are proposing to do that differently moving forward. Uh, the community development block grant has informed us that they, in the future, will not be funding demolition projects. We'll have to apply for a different sort of grant. Um, to keep up with the demolition, we will be uh, asking the foundation to supplement our funds rather than using those federal funds to do so. Um, so this, again, is an important grant for us to uh, keep up with uh, tearing down the dilapidated structures as we, uh, as we need to through our process. So those are the basic overview. I realize that's a lot of information. Um, one other thing I note, there are some other grants that may come to us next week that the city itself is not applying for, but we may be partners with or be uh, asked to, to write letters of support for. So uh, that will be a separate agenda item for letters of support that will come before you next week. So if you see a project that, that you know about that isn't on here that the city is supposed to support, it likely will be on the agenda next week. Um, there's uh, grants we've talked about with Founders Place, the 911 Center, and a couple of other areas. Um, and so uh, we do expect those to come and, and be part of the agenda next week as letters of support, not a, a city grant. Um, with that said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. <coughs> yes. Item number five passes. Item number six, please. Consider approval to transfer $16,394.50 from the city's matching grant program to the War Memorial Park Trust for operational programs or take other necessary action. Ms. Miller. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, you may remember this spring uh, after the, the flood event, um, the city council authorized us to use matching grant funds to assist the Batfish with operational expenses. Uh, they're trying to raise money for their capital improvements in, in getting the, the Batfish back up and running. Um, so we, uh, the council at that time agreed that they would match um, the money that either A, the Batfish raised, or B, um, that they would match uh, what their admissions um, uh, income was over previous years. The idea was just to give them operational money um, to stay afo afloat, if you will, um, through this time as they try and prepare uh, to, to get the, the batfish back up and running. And so that's what this is. Um, all matching grant fund requests come to the council for approval. So that's why this is before you in the, the documentation uh, is before you in your packet. And uh, Mr. Trout from uh, the War Memorial Park is here to answer any questions. If you have any, we recommend approval. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Item number six passes. Item number seven. Consider approval to award a consulting service agreement and business associate agreement to Alliant Insurance Services for the purpose of providing broker services for employee health benefits as recommended by the city's health insurance committee and further to authorize the mayor to execute all documents necessary to facilitate the award and establish a broker of record or take other necessary action. Ms. Pluckett. Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Um, for those of you that are new, I'm going to give you a um, semi-brief rundown um, history of our insurance fund. Um, we're self-insured for insurance, and in 2000, um, prior to 2014, we were with Healthcare Solutions Group. Um, we were in the red, um, about $900,000 in the red. Um, the insurance committee had decided at that time, to, um, in about 2013, to go out for bid for a new broker service and um, a new TPA. We did that process and we had hired Blue Cross Blue Shield as the TPA and NFP or Machino Huddleston and Associates as they were known back then. Um, over the years, um, we have significantly increased our insurance fund. Um, we went from negative 900,000 um, to over 3 million. Um, it was a recommendation at that time to have about three months of um, claims, hard claims in our, in our fund instead of um, having a plush fund. Um, we have um, done some really great th things for our employees. We have um, 
reduce the insurance contributions. Um, in 2017, we had a 13.97% premium holiday. We continued that premium holiday in 2018. Um, we have added some additional benefits. Um, however, due to claims experience um, and some additional um, stop loss claims, our fund has again dropped. Um, we thought we would do a due diligence to the city and to the committee um, and go out for bid again for brokerage services to see if we could get anything more um, so a new broker could um, negotiate some new terms with some new um, carriers if possible. Um, we went out for bid in November um, or for request for a proposal. We received those proposals back in December. Um, a committee, committee comprised of myself, Chris Cummings, Marcy um, Gillum, and Maggie Eaton um, reviewed those respondents. There were six total, um, and we invited the top two respondents back to the insurance committee um, a couple of weeks ago to do presentations. Those two um, top committees were NFP, which was our broker at the time, um, or still is, um, and also Alliant Benefit Services. Um, the insurance committee unanimous, unanimously voted to um, go with Alliant Benefit. Um, they've got some great services. They've got some customer service that is specifically dedicated um, to specific tasks instead of one person dedicated to many tasks. Their reporting mechanisms are fantastic. Their customer service seems to be top notch and it was voted again unanimously um, to hire Alliant Benefits, Benefit Services by the Insurance Committee. Um, the Brady Ayala with um, Alliant, he may be a familiar face to some of you as he used to work for NFP, um, but he has transitioned to Alliant, um, no association any longer. Um, these two agreements before you, payment on those agreements would begin on May the 1st, However, their services will begin immediately after council approval next week. Um, there's a long process that's ahead of us to um, see if we can get any better um, competitive rates going forward. Those have to come to you hopefully before April the 1st so we can do open enrollment for insurance beginning April the 1st, which is required for our employees, um, and then have everything implemented on May the 1st. Um, Brady's here if we have any questions for Alliant, and I'm also happy to answer any questions. I recommend approval for these two consulting agreements and for the mayor to execute the broker of letter record um, effective next week, Monday. <coughs> what are the changes to the employees? Um, as of right now, we are unsure. The, the cost difference right now for the city is going to be $1.50 per employee per month. Um, that will drop. NFP is currently charging us $18.50 per employee per month, um, and the um, Alliant Benefit Services will go down to um, $17 per employee per month. We are, um, because of their customer service, we're hoping to see more immediate turnaround time for claims. Um, they have a 48-hour um, required window to respond, correct? Um, with a 24 hour flagging in their system. So if an employee or the HR department does not receive a response within 24 or 48 hours, um, that's immediately escalated to um, somebody in management um, to receive a response. So I think that's one of the great things that our employees will receive, will receive um, is a more immediate response. Again, those employees um, are gonna receive information from a dedicated person instead of a dedicated person that is dedicated to many different tasks. So the primary reason uh, for going this way was not price, but service. Along. It was a comp compilation of many different things. We had um, five different things to choose from. It was price, service, um, customer service, response to the, um, to the RFP, and let's see. General quality and responsiveness, um, organization and the personnel, so their, their teams that are behind them, the cost, service information, and customer service. The healthcare is just so important anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just it's mm -hmm. critical. And, and costs are continually to, continually rising. Um, and unfortunately, we may have to see that this year with our employees. Um, but I think based on the last several years, the trend has been to save money. Um, and I think it's been a projection that we see that coming. Um, we don't know when. And our hopes are still that we won't have to, but it, it, it may be um, this next year that we see that increase coming. Yeah. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any discussion? 
Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Thank you. All right, item number seven passes, and with that item passing, that is our final item for the Finance Committee. We will now go ahead and call the Public Works Committee meeting uh, for February the 3rd, uh, 2020 to order. Uh, item number one, please. Consider approval of Public Works Committee minutes of January 6, 2020. I'm sure everybody's had time to review. Do I have a motion? Move for approval. Second. Any questions or comments from uh, committee? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Item number one passes. Item number two, please. Consider approval to authorize the city manager to provide a letter of support to the Oklahoma Army National Guard supporting their potential future relocation of the state's air traffic services unit to Muskogee Davis Regional Airport or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin, please. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, in 2014, the airports had an agreement between the Oklahoma National Guard and the FAA allowing their air traffic control uh, battalion to provide training at our airport. The unit consists of about 75 soldiers. Uh, they come several times through the year to, to perform this training. They are exploring the possibility of moving that unit and along with their support personnel from Lexington to Muskogee Armed Forces Reserve uh, Center, which is located just west of the airport. Uh, potentially in the future, this would allow for a full-time training program at our airport, which would also allow them to provide us some regularly scheduled air traffic services. So this would not only benefit them, it would benefit also the airport and the city with you having 75 uh, soldiers here in town, uh, shopping, eating, and different or, or getting different services. Uh, at this point, they're basically just requesting a letter of support for the potential future relocation. The airport board met uh, last week and they did recommend approval. Be glad to answer any questions. Move for approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. Uh, any questions from committee? This would be a great thing for our community. Mm -hmm. it, it would be. I know from serving on the airport uh, board in the past, every time they've came, uh, it's been a tremendous impact to our community uh, financially. Uh, but also having the temporary air traffic control out there during that time period, it increases our air traffic, uh, which helps our number with the FAA. I mean, it's just a tremendous impact. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, having this permanently is just an, another feather in our hat. Yeah, if our it community. works out and they can be out there training every day, it will be a, a big benefit to the for the air traffic control services. Just, just another step. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. Item number two passes. Item number three, please. Receive report and update on the Muskogee Police Department's Police Athletic League. Uh, Chief Teehee, please. Chairman and members of the committee, thank you. I uh, also want to thank Mr. Miller for the opportunity to be here tonight to give you an update on something that really means a lot to me. I've had a chance over the years to speak to some of you. I know some of you around when this program was put in place back in 1991. I wasn't a big fan of it then because I was called into the chief's office and said, hey, you're going to be in charge of this program. Uh, not realizing what it was and obviously something new, I was not a big fan at the time. Uh, had a chance to work with Mr. Perkins with the Paul Young Football League um, and realizing that uh, in our community there's a lot of kids. It's kind of like I was when I grew up. I didn't have a father in the home. I was raised by my grandparents. So it took a, an assortment of coaches, uh, community men, uh, friends, fathers, that type of stuff that helped to raise me to get me to where I am today. Uh, and so after I got involved with this program, I realized it was God's way of me having an opportunity to give back to something that, uh, that so many gave to me over my life to get me where I am today. So um, when I had my interview for the chief's job, uh, when I had an opportunity for accepting that job, the city manager asked me, he said, if there's one thing that you would have to have in order to take this job, what would it be? And without hesitation, it was our athletic program. Uh, it was started again in 1991. Uh, I had an opportunity to do that for 18 years uh, and loved every bit of it once it got going. Um, 
It was something that in 2010, by the time we went from Paul Young football, we was doing football, softball, baseball, basketball, you name it. If it had to do with athletics, the police department had an involvement with it, and it was from kids ages third grade all the way up through high school. Uh, when, we, when the program was taken away by the current city manager in 2010, we were, had actually out, uh, officers who were assigned to the uh, football team at Muskogee. Uh, coaching positions. It wasn't just a gimme type position. It was something where we actually had a position within the coaching staff, uh, coach positions, and it was a pretty neat deal. Um, just a real quick story. Uh, we went around when we started the program in 91 and we went to the elementary schools and started trying to recruit football players. Uh, I had a little kid that come up to me uh, by the name of David. I remember him. I won't give his last name just because I don't want to embarrass him, but I use this story all the time. Uh, he said, he said I, I'd really like to do that, but I live in the projects. And he said, I don't have a way to get to practice. Well, at the time, we were using our police cars, and we would go and we would pick those kids up and wherever it was at, housing projects, wherever it might be. Uh, and I remember the first time I went to pick David up, and I turned over off of 6th Street down to 6th Street Hill. And as I turned the corner, obviously, it was in the uh, early fall. And there was a lot of little kids out there, all ages, and they took off running. It was a police car in the projects in 1990s, and you guys have lived here. You know in the 90s it was uh, gangs, crack cocaine, and, and it, was, it was a bad situation. So as I pulled around there, I mean, my heart just sunk. I'm like, good grief, you know, because all the kids were running. And I pulled up right where I was supposed to, honked my horn, and here come David flying out of there, just a big old grin, and jumped in the back of my police car, and you could see people peeking around to see what was going on. Uh, and over the course of that first month or so uh, of those practices, uh, by the time we got to the point of our first game, everybody knew what we was there for. We were picking those kids up, and it was a part of a program that was a positive. And by the end of the year, it was just the opposite. It was kind of like we'd pull up, and the kids would just come flying to us. When can we play? When can we play? Uh, and from that point on, I knew the program was going to be a success. Uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm big on, and you all know this, is, is about community outreach. Uh, there's not a better place for us as police officers to be involved than with our kids. Uh, so I thank you all as council. I thank the city manager for trusting me with this program. Uh, and it's just a little bit of an update. Uh, Reggie Cotton's going to come and do a PowerPoint, just kind of giving you an idea. It's the first time we've had a, have an involvement. Uh, and I can't can't even imagine the, the loss we had for the nine years that we didn't have it. Uh, but w we've got a good group of guys that are going out trying to make up for lost ground. So thank you guys. To the council, I think I've got about uh, 200 slides, so we'll be here. All right. <laughs> here we go. We like good news whenever we can have some. Okay, sound. well, good deal. <laughs> Uh, the purpose, the community need for positive youth engagement program. Uh, we've uh, talked to or we've started uh, the flag football with Muskogee Public Schools at this point in time. Uh, we have uh, 150 kids. Uh, most of the coaches were volunteers and uh, Muskogee police officers. Uh, we actually had five uh, police officers that actually coached uh, and some that uh, didn't know anything about flag football. Uh, they just drove their police cars out there and just kind of provided security or did little things, whatever it was that they needed to do. Also, it builds trust. And uh, what we want to do is uh, continue to build trust between the community, uh, the uh, police department, uh, and everybody that uh, makes up this particular community. This particular outreach program, we've uh, started flag football with uh, Muskogee Public Schools. Uh, we'll also be uh, working with uh, Hilldale Public Schools. We have some things that uh, will be working with Ty, as a matter of fact, later on uh, in the next couple of weeks, and uh, we'll announce those things uh, just, uh, in just a few weeks. Right now, it's uh, basketball. We have 220 kids uh, that we're helping with, uh, with Muskogee Public School System. Uh, one of our coaches, uh, Ron Mays, coaches two girls' teams. Uh, he coaches uh, the uh, younger girls and the older girls. Uh, the younger girls are third grade and fourth grade, and the older girls fifth and sixth grade, and uh, doing a remarkable job. But 220 kids uh, total. Uh, they play over at the uh, Alice Robertson Annex. And if you ever go out there, there's cars parked everywhere. Uh, and I would venture to say, uh, myself and Chief was there last Saturday and kind of watched the program, uh, watched some of the games. And 
throughout the day from 9 o'clock until 4 o'clock uh, whenever they end, there's probably uh, four or 500 people that come through that facility. Uh, they see the police cars. They see us working with Muskogee Public Schools. They see our name, uh, police department logo uh, on the shirts as well. So it's a really good program. We are uh, getting ready to venture into hunting, fishing, and archery. And when we started talking about hunting, fishing, archery, I kind of cringed at, the, at that point in time because uh, I was raised as a city boy here in Muskogee. And uh, uh, a lot of the guys that grew up here in, in Muskogee around the area, uh, that's just like playing football, hunting, fishing, archery, and some of those things. Uh, I think uh, one of the uh, cities around us uh, I think Tahlequah has a program that they're starting up uh, with archery. So uh, this is something that we're definitely looking into and uh, will be a part of. The hunting uh, activities actually started uh, last year. Uh, and uh, just to kind of give you an update, I really can't uh, see the PowerPoint from here. But uh, in the hunting uh, section, uh, we ended up taking four kids out uh, last year. Uh, in the uh, hunting program. Um, they ended up uh, harvesting a deer, uh, and that's one of the things that we want to teach the kids as well. Uh, not me, I'm not a avid hunter, but I do all of my uh, hunting at Walmart. But uh, <laughs> one of the things that uh, we want to do is show the kids, uh, you know, some of the Oklahoma values, some of the values uh, of growing up, and uh, just that, that positivity at showing young people uh, growing, uh, hunting, uh, just a way of life for Oklahomans. Other outdoor activities uh, that we're looking at, uh, we're actually looking at some things like some of the martial arts, which is on the next slide. Oh, kind of hard to see the PowerPoint. Uh, but we're uh, actually looking at things like uh, martial arts, uh, gaming. Gaming is huge right now. Uh, there's even uh, colleges and universities that are uh, giving kids full scholarships uh, in the gaming industry just for playing video games. It seems simple enough, but uh, it's a huge thing right now uh, in colleges and universities. So we're, we're actually looking at some of those programs in w as well. Uh, and last but not least, uh, starting in April, we will have an exclusive softball program uh, with 12, uh, 12 to 15 uh, girls from the ages of I think 12 to 15, uh, and they will be the Muskogee Police Department Blue Angels, and uh, they will be coached by Muskogee police officers, and uh, that's where we're at at this point in time. I know I probably went a little bit over on time, but uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Sounds great. Sounds great. I, I just, I'm really thrilled uh, about the program. Um, you know, community policing, uh, well, that's one thing Muskogee does good, and y'all do an outstanding job of it. And, uh, you know, the whole program focused in on relationships, and it's building those relationships with our youth. And uh, I, I can't think, uh, Chief Tehe, when you told that story, uh, that was not a story. That was, that was real life. And uh, that said it all right there. That said it all. When you talk about that car pulling in and one, one reaction to another reaction, and that's what we hope to start in our community and it's happening and this is just uh, getting the roots deeper in our community thank you so much i was just going to say also if you watched the super bowl last night uh, there was a young man by the name of josh jacobs uh, they did a commercial for him he's from north tulsa he started out in a program uh, very similar uh, to the one that uh, we've started here at muskogee and uh, he's made it all the way to the nfl uh, played at the university of alabama and he started out as a homeless young man. So that's another opportunity that we have with Muskogee Police Department in helping not only develop relationships, but uh, maybe we'll see some long-term success as well. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Very good. Any other comments from committee? I don't think there's any action. This was just a report mm -hmm. item. I haven't received any uh, public to be <coughs> heard, so that will conclude the Public Works Committee. Okay, and we will call to order the February 3, 2020 uh, meeting of the Muskogee City Council. And we'll have the roll call. 
Mayor Janie Boydston. Here. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Marlon Coleman. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Derek Reed. Here. Alex Reynolds. Jamie Stout. Here. Okay, item one. No. Consider an executive session to discuss and take possible action on the following. A, pursuant to section 307B4, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss ongoing litigation styled Carmen v. City of Muskogee, case number CJ2011468, Clark v. City of Muskogee, case number CJ2011464, Cochran v. City of Muskogee, case number CJ2011466, Cox v. City of Muskogee, case number CJ2011465, Maxey v. City of Muskogee, CJ11469, and Scoggins v. City of Muskogee, CJ11467, all filed in the district court in and for Muskogee County, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session, including the appointment of a fully authorized settlement representative. B, pursuant to Section 307, B4, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss litigation related to the national opioid epidemic, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. Make a motion. We go into executive session. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. Please excuse us while we go into executive session. And we're back. Roll call, please. Mayor Janie Boydston. Here. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Marlon Coleman. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Derek Reed. Here. Alex Reynolds. Jamie Stout. Here. Mr. Tucker. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, item 1A, pursuant to Section 307B4, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the City Council did convene an executive session to discuss the lawsuit styled Carmen v. City of Muskogee, Clark v. City of Muskogee, Cochran v. City of Muskogee, Cox v. City of Muskogee, Maxey v. City of Muskogee, and Scogg Scoggins v. City of Muskogee. Uh, all filed within the district court in and Muskogee County. Mm -hmm. After being briefed on the status of those cases and the court ordered settlement conference set for February 5th, uh, I believe an appropriate motion would be to appoint Stephanie Jones Morgan to serve as a fully authorized settlement representative pursuant to a settlement range as discussed in executive session. So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. And the motion carries. Item 1B, uh, pursuant to Section 307B4, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the City Council did convene an executive session to discuss the City's involvement in litigation related to the national opioid academic epidemic. Uh, finding that Council had previously authorized the hiring of the law firm of Fulmer Sill PLLC. I believe an appropriate motion would be to approve the filing of a lawsuit <coughs> on behalf of the city. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. That concludes our agenda for this evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm.